Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a motor mount on your car or your truck. I'll be doing this on a Ford Windstar, but the process will be the same or very similar on most makes and models. The main difference is going to be the location of your motor mount, but the process to unbolt it and put a new one in and jack the engine up and stuff is all going to be the same. So a motor mount just isolates the engine from the frame of the car. The frame of the car bolts to here, the engine bolts to here, and there's a bunch of rubber in here that keeps the engine from vibrating too much. If you're not sure if your motor mounts are bad, I have a video on how to diagnose a bad motor mount, and I'll put that video link at the end of this video, and also in the description below. The first step is to jack up the vehicle and put it on jack stands. With the vehicle jacked all the way up, the jack stands are securely in place, I put an extra jack stand on the side I'll be working on for extra safety. We're on the passenger side here. This is the motor mount I'm going to be replacing. It's the rear passenger side motor mount. Right now there's a rear, there's a front, and then there's a transmission mount on the other side, the driver's side. So if we go behind the tire here, you can see the motor mount is located right there. Instead of removing the tire, we're just going to turn the wheel to gain access to the motor mount. Now we have all the room we need to get in here and we have easy access to that motor mount right there. Now before you ever go underneath the vehicle, once it's jacked up, what you do is you just put your hand here and you shake it as hard as you can. And the car shouldn't move at all, so you know it's sturdy. So I'm behind the tire underneath the car right now. There's the motor mount we're gonna go underneath. And you can see why I'm replacing this motor mount. I was doing a water pump change and you have to loosen the bottom bolt on the motor mount so you could jack the engine up in order to get the water pump off. And when I was retightening this down to 85 foot-pounds of torque, which is the correct torque spec, the bolt just sheared right off because this motor mount is defective. So we're going to have to replace the whole entire motor mount. Now up top here there's a bolt and then there's a little peg. You can see the bolt stud and the little peg it fits in only one way. There's also a little heat shield that we'll use that's on the motor mount that's in the car right now. Now to change your motor mount, you're not really going to need that many tools. Obviously you're going to have your new motor mount. You want to make sure that you have a deep enough socket. In this case, there are 18 millimeter nuts that go on each of these. You're going to need extensions. A universal joint extension is definitely helpful in some situations so that you can get a little bit of a wobble. If you can't get directly over it, it allows you to go at an angle a little bit. You'll need a torque wrench, and then you'll probably need a breaker bar because these bolts are going to be on there tough. But that's really it. And also don't forget you're going to need jack stands, a jack, and some pieces of wood. But it's really basic and really simple to do. It's all about having access to your motor mounts. In this case, the motor mount is like right down there. We're going to go behind here and you can actually see there's the top bolt for the motor mount. So I could just send an extension down there with a ratchet. And then you can attach a ratchet right up here and ratchet away on that top nut. And I already showed you how easy it is to access the bottom nut from under the car. Since the bottom bolt on my motor mount is sheared off already, I don't have to take it off. So right now, before you jack the engine up at all, you want to take off both bolts. The top bolt and the bottom bolt. So I already got the bottom bolt off. I'm going to go take off the top bolt. To get the top bolt off, we're going to be going from the top of the engine compartment with extensions. I already showed you where this is back here. So we'll just slip this in the back, kind of work your way in there, get it down. So now you're just going to feel around for that bolt. So now just play around with this until you get it on top of the bolt, just like that. In your situation, you're probably going to need a breaker bar, but I'm going to be using one of these longer ratchets, half inch, with that universal joint extension. I recently replaced these motor mounts, remember, so this really shouldn't be stuck on there. It was torqued to 85 foot-pounds. This is where the universal joint extension comes into very good use. Okay, so I didn't need to use a breaker bar, but you might have to. You most likely will have to, especially if you're working on the original motor mounts. So now just unscrew this. Once you get it loose enough, you could probably do it by hand. So I'm just going to keep my extension here. There's no need to move it. We could jack the engine up and we could replace the motor mount just keeping this here. It was kind of a pain to get in, so no need to remove it. So now we'll move down to the wheel and just go in by hand to remove that top nut off the motor mount. Loosen this all the way, I'll go back here, grab the nut. So now the nut is off at the top and it's also off at the bottom. Now we can jack the engine up. Now I'm underneath the car, the front of the car is that way. You can see here's where that jack is. My jack stands are here. Here's the oil pan, here's the transmission pan. In a couple seconds I'm going to be taking this jack, lowering it, 
and I'm gonna be bringing it over here. You do not wanna jack up the engine on the oil pan for the engine or the transmission pan for the engine. Your jack will go right through this and you could damage your engine and obviously damage the pan that you're jacking it up on. Where you can jack up on is any solid point on the transmission or the engine. What I like to do, you can see here, here's a solid point. You could put a piece of wood on here and jack this up. Here's a nice solid piece. Here's a decently solid piece right here. Since the motor mount's right there, I'm gonna put the piece of wood right here right on the side of the transmission oil pan won't do any damage nice strong surface to jack this right up so i'm going to take the jack off slide it underneath where the motor mount is so here's my jack with a piece of wood like i said before i'm using the edge you can see the piece of wood is right on there it's going to be on a nice flat piece the motor mount is right there so you're pressing up on the engine on the side where the motor mount is. Because if you press up on the engine on that side and the motor mount is on this side, you're not going to do anything. And now, let's jack this baby up. Some words of caution. Never be underneath the vehicle when you're jacking the motor up. Sometimes when you jack the motor up, it jacks up all the way and then the other motor mounts cause the car to lift off the jack stands and that could be dangerous. So make sure you watch the frame of the car and it doesn't lift off the jack stands when you're jacking up the motor. Okay, that should be perfect, and now we'll be able to take the old motor mount out. Now all you have to do is lift up, wiggle it out, just like so. Got the motor mount out. That plastic piece was just a heat shield, we'll take that out too. And you guys know I always inspect parts to make sure that they're the same. You can see the angle of this is the same. You can see that these are on the same sides, and this looks like the identical part, which it should be, but I always check. The heat shield only goes on one way. There's a hole there, so you'll be able to just put it right in that little peg. And fits on just like that. And all it does is protect this rubber behind here from any heat from the catalytic converters and the exhaust. Now when we look at where the top of the motor mount meets that bracket there, you can see that little peg on the left side. That means we're going to have to put the motor mount in so that the peg is on the left side and it'll line up. Don't worry about the peg right away. The key is to get this stud in first. So I'm just going to bring this back in here. It actually might be easier to get that bottom stud in first with the bottom bolt in. Just kind of tilt this this way. So once you get that aligned right there, both studs are aligned in the holes. Now we can lower the engine. So as we lower the engine, we just want to make sure that those studs go into the holes. And you can see it's falling right through. Just watch that little stud right there, make sure that's going into the right hole. Perfect. Now I'm just lowering the engine. I'm going to lower the engine all the way now. Good. There we go. So I have the stud in a vice grips here. And I'm just going to loosen this bolt off. Good. So for both of these motor mount nuts, I'm going to use some blue Loctite, which is the removable type. It just prevents vibration from loosening these up. And you don't have to put a lot. Just put a little bit in there like that and a little bit in there like that and it'll get all over the threads when you tighten it down. So that's the bottom motor mount stud. I'm gonna reach my hand around here and go to the top and I'll just tighten that down by hand as much as I can and then I'm gonna take my socket and put it right on top. Looking down from the engine compartment we could see the socket is on the nut. So I'm gonna tighten this down And once this gets tight, we'll get out our torque wrench. Got our torque wrench on here. Tighten this down. 85 foot-pounds. Good. Now let's go tighten the nut on the bottom. So we're at the bottom stud. Hand tighten that on there. After this gets too tight by hand, we'll tighten it by ratchet. And then once it's too hard to turn, we'll torque it down. This gets torqued to 85 foot-pounds as well. Good, and we are officially done. So that's how you replace a motor mount. You see how simple it is? It's all about having clearance. If you have clearance to get to those bolts, this job is simple. Now that you know the basic idea of how you do this, you can apply this to any vehicle. You saw how it was done on my 95 Ford Windstar. 
Hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. So the top tip for this video is, this is a very high vibration area. I mean, you're dampening the vibrations of the engine through the motor mount. So just as a precaution, you could get a marker and just mark where that nut is against the frame. So anytime you go underneath the car, you could see if that moved or not. It's just a simple thing to give you peace of mind. It's not going to move. You had that thread locker on there. You tightened it down to the correct torque. And you could also do this for any suspension bolts that you might take off and put back on. Just to give you a little peace of mind.